Mika, it's really good to see you. Uh, good to talk to you. How is, is life for you over in Belgium just now? Now, of course, it's it's strange. Uh, to be honest, we we've been training a little bit with a with a club twice a week in in groups of four. So that's been okay. Uh, but yeah, other than that, you know, it's just a strange uh, time at the moment. Yeah, and I suppose just even getting to train with a few of your teammates. At least you're getting out and on on the training pitch and playing with the ball, which is good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, you're getting tired of of do the the running on your own uh, all all the week. So it's been uh, that's uh, helped a lot uh, to be out there and have some crosses and uh, yeah, have, have some good time uh, on the on the pitch. And I take it the, the club are then you've got your own training program that you have to do in between those sessions as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's been it's been a lot of running, so uh, maybe not the. The most fun to do, but uh, it's uh, probably necessary. Yeah, because I suppose it's strange for footballers because at that time of the season, most of the times it's just game after game. You don't really get a chance yes. to, to train, so it's it's probably a completely different environment for you now. Yeah, absolutely. But I think the most uh, you know crazy part about about it is you don't know what when we're gonna be back or what's gonna happen with the season and next season. So. Uh, yeah, when you're out there training, you always have a goal. You always need to know that it, it, it's a game uh, around the corner. But now it's you're just running for the running sake. So it's that's probably the the, the hardest thing about it. Yeah, and I, I spoke to some of the other guys who obviously during pre-season, you know, there's a goal at the end of it. As you say, it's it's games, but at the moment it's kind of open-ended, and you don't know when the football's going to start. No, exactly. So. I think we're gonna have a meeting today in in Belgium, and then hopefully we get, we know what's gonna happen with with uh, this season. But uh, like you said, it's probably gonna be yeah three or four months without any game, so that's that's uh, strange. Yeah, and how have you found overall your first season? You know, playing in Belgium, playing Belgian football. No, it's been it's been good. I've had a really good start. Uh, obviously the. The team, uh, the club have uh, done really good in the in the league. Uh, right now, we're sitting second, and uh, we had a great spell in Europe as well. So the the, the season overall has been really good. Uh, so uh, it's been a, it's been a quite good experience. When you, when you go after after so many years at Celtic, it's always a, a new environment and a new challenge for you in terms of football. Yeah, of course, and you mean you you meet new teams and new players and you know different kind of tactics over here in Belgium so of course it uh, took some time to to get uh, into that but uh, like I said the the team done really good and we have a have a great squad here so yeah it's, it's, it's been fun yeah and I suppose in terms of international football frustration for, for you and your Swedish teammates because you obviously did so well qualifying for Euro 2020 as well and that have been something to look forward to in the summer yeah, yeah absolutely uh, especially when you start to get older it was probably a, a good way to to say goodbye to the to the national team with the with the Euros, but now you you know you need to hang in there for another year. Uh, but of course, we I was really looking forward to the to the summer. But uh, like I said, we just need to hang in there for for another year now. Yeah, I mean, I take it you still keep in touch with uh, some of the guys back in Celtic. Yeah, yeah, of course, uh, still still talk with some of some of the uh, the guys, and obviously I'm. I'm following every step that Celtic uh, takes, so uh, absolutely. Yeah, and you you were obviously there from the very start of this eight in a, eight in a row run. Uh, that's an incredible level of success that you enjoyed when you were playing for Celtic. Yeah, yeah, of course. Every year, uh, every 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 moment, it's been it's been a long highlight for me. So absolutely, that's uh, you know years that I'm really happy uh, that I'm was a part of such a. Great club and uh, great teams. Because it's actually it must be it must be difficult for you to even pick highlights for that. As you say, there's so many from when you won your first title under Neil right through to to last season when you scored the goal. It set, set us off at Petodre to win eight in a row. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, of course, it's a couple of games that um, comes to my mind straight away. But like you said, it it's been it's been a, a lot of them, and it it's re it's really hard to just pick one. Yeah. What 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 would be the games that do come to your mind right away? Yes. Well, obviously, uh, Barcelona. It's uh, it's always up there. Uh, the game against uh, Caragande at home. Uh, we have a couple of games against Rangers. Uh, yeah. What else? Uh, help me out. 
I mean, that's, that's the thing, because actually, cause at first I was almost going to say, I'm not sure when people see this, if they'll recognise you without that policeman's hat, because that, <laughs> that, uh, that's just one of the great celebrations, I think, from the eight in a row run. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, it was a really great game, you know, won the league with 5-0, 5-1 uh, at home. So absolutely, that, that was a big one. And obviously the, the first treble treble against uh, Aberdeen was uh, special. And the last one against Hearts because I, I knew it's uh, going to be my last game. So that was obviously a, a real special game. Yeah, <clears throat> I, was, I was talking to James Forrest last week and he was kind of laughing because obviously that was the day he scored against Rangers. We won the league. That was his first goal in a derby. <laughs> Everybody remembers it as, as uh, your, the day you had the policeman's hat on. <laughs> yeah, I know. We, we we spoke about that after as well. You know, I feel a little bit sorry for for Jamesy because it was a unbelievable goal. And uh, well, you know, if uh, if you're not a attacker, striker, and can score goals, you you, you need to try to make up upwards something. Because it's funny, like, I I take it it's just in the moment these celebrations. Because people will remember that they remember the the boss beach ball in your head, the, you know, playing the keyboards, and then even the, the celebration when you did score at Ibrox in that 5-1 game, which was just brilliant as well, the goal and the celebration. Yeah, of course. I mean, obviously, goals do things to me. You know, you get a little bit mental, and uh, I've always been been that guy. Uh, so, hopefully, it's... Uh, yeah, I got some more celebration uh, over the past year. Last yeah. year. I mean, you, you mentioned there the the first treble of, of the run when Tom Rogic scores that goal at the end of the game at Hamden. I mean, I think every fan remembers that. It's goosebumps. I mean, what, what was that like when, when that ball hits the back of the net? Uh, no, but it was unbelievable. I mean, especially it, it was so long. Uh, Celtic uh, are waiting for, for, for that treble and it's been a lot of talks for, for weeks and months that uh, can we do it? And then it was a really tight game, and uh, you know Aberdeen was one nil up. So to to be able to to win that and uh, and see Tom score a uh, late winning goal it was uh, was amazing. Yeah, because I, I was talking to to Big Yozo recently as well, and it's actually remarkable to think that both you and him won the the, the invincible treble. Or, or invincible with Celtic, but also previously done that with uh, you know he'd done it with Denham was a grab. You did it with Rosenberg as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, it's kind of crazy. I mean, in, in Norway, you just play 30 games, so it's maybe a little bit easier. But to have done that twice, uh, it's it's crazy. And, you know, that season, I think we had the, the points record as well, uh, the most scoring goals. So that season was, was just, uh, yeah, it was, was crazy. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, just last season, obviously, the, the last game at Hamden when Hodgson scored the goals to win the treble again. And, was that quite an emotional day, as you say? You, you knew then that would be the, the last time you'd be you wearing a Celtic jersey. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I remember I have a really, really poor game, uh, and I thought to myself, you know, imagine if we lose this, and this would be, be my last game. So you know, it, 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 it couldn't happen. But you know, I'm so grateful that you know Otson scored the scored the winning goal, that and we we went for the treble, treble. Uh, so it was the the, the per- perfect end. Yeah, and you said you obviously keep up to date with what's happening at Celtic. And how impressed have you been with, with how uh, the guys have done this season? No, amazing. Uh, of course, it, it, it was a lot of players who... Uh, it, it was a lot of different players coming in and, you know, they've been brilliant for the for the club. And uh, like you said, it's, uh, to watch them play, it's been been uh, amazing for the, for the whole season. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a good watch. And this season, when obviously when when getting get into the Europa League group stages or even into the, the last thirty two, was a part of you hoping that you would draw Celtic? I was was I was crazy. Uh, uh, you know, both uh, Ghent and Celtic won the group, so we, we couldn't get each other. But before that, uh, of course, you always want to come back to Celtic Park, but to to be an uh, opponent opponent it would be I uh, would be really really strange. Yeah, because I actually remember um, Henrik, his first season after yeah. after leaving Celtic, came back with Barcelona, and I think it was strange. I think I presume it was strange for him. It was certainly strange for us to yeah. see him in another jersey. And I'm sure it'd have been the same if if we saw you running out at Celtic Park and 
I'd wonder what happened to Celtic squad if you just end up joining the Celtic. <laughs> Probably. Uh, not like I said, I, I remember that game as well when when Henry, he scored that goal as well, right? Yeah, yes. yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, you can just see on, on his face that you know it's what was probably a really strange feeling for him. Yeah, because I suppose when you're when you're at a club for so long, it becomes part of you, and it's not just another club; it's it's part of the team that you support. It's a real big part of your life as well. Yeah, yeah, of course. And I mean, if you're gonna play against your teammates, your your yeah, your mates that have been your friends for for the last eight years, and uh, against your fans. And uh, yeah, it would be just uh, crazy. And uh, I think you have no idea how, uh, how you're going to handle it uh, uh, after the, b- b- before the game. Yeah. And just, uh, I mean, I know I've probably asked you this before about Scott Brown. You, you were his friend and teammate for all those years. And, you know, you, you stood in for him as captain whenever he wasn't playing. But, I mean, he's again, he's just another remarkable season. He's just a remarkable player, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a, he's a machine just getting better. Uh, and uh, you know it's it's a, the thing with Bruni. I mean, if you see him in training every day, he always up there in uh, every test. He's so fit, and uh, I think he's pushing what's that thirty five this year. Yeah. yeah. But uh, now hopefully he he can stay for for at least another one two years and uh, be able to to lift the ten in a row. Yeah, and in terms of your own. Uh, career going forward you're obviously we spoke earlier on about Sweden next summer hopefully the, the Euros and you know you just obviously want to just keep playing for as long as you can at, at the highest level yeah of course uh, I got another two years here and then we we'll see what happens but I think when you when you start to get a little bit older you just take take a season at a time and uh, but at the moment my my body has been really good uh, knock my wood but uh, haven't been injured this year yet so uh no, at the moment it feels good. And have you had any uh, memorable celebrations with Ghent so far? <laughs> uh, pff, I'm not sure yet. Uh, no, not yet. <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, there's still time for that. Yeah. Well, listen, Mika, let, thanks very much for, for taking the time to talk to us. I know the Celtic fans, uh, you were a big favourite and you know I think they'll be delighted just to, to hear from you and to hear how well you're doing. Yeah, you know, I, I miss uh, all of them. So hopefully hopefully next year we, we, we can see each other again. That's great. Listen, thanks very much for now. Okay, thank you, Paul.